Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in John chapter 1, verse 6, Acts chapter 3, verse 16, and James chapter 1, verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Help us to see it properly and help us to understand your will for our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, John chapter one, verse six, there was a man sent from God whose name was John. All right. And so this scripture is speaking of John the Baptist, right? And so, um, this is, um, speaking of the fact that, um, he, he was sent from the Lord. Amen. He was, um, a man of God. So John the Baptist was, you know, a man who lived a lifestyle that was very set apart, right? We we know that, you know, when he came, it was his life's purpose was to um proclaim the coming of Christ and and um proclaim that the king was here, right? That the king had come and to make way for the king. And so um he had been prophesied of that he was coming and you know he he was he had a very specific role and he was very good at what he did. Right. Um and so the thing that um the Holy Spirit was showing me about this was that he's actually talking about he's he's reflecting on Eli, um, Elijah, because remember, Elijah is a form of John the Baptist. And so, you know, when Christ had come from the Mount of Transfiguration, um, he descended down the mountain and, and they were talking about, um, why is it that the scribes say that Elijah must first come? And so, um, remember Jesus's reply was that Elijah had come. Right. And he was speaking of John the Baptist. And so um, that is what the Lord was speaking to me here is that he was uh, showing us. He's giving us a reflection that John the Baptist is to come. Amen. And so we know that that's true um, for the tribulation before Christ comes and sets up his kingdom. There will be two witnesses um, who are to come and one of them will be Elijah and and they believe the other Moses. Um, and so when this does take place, um, we know that they will be preaching for two years. Um, uh <laughs> They will be preaching for two years and they will be um, the the at, at the second portion of the three and a half years. I'm sorry. And um, they are are to be witnesses for God. Amen. And so um, the second verse that the Lord gave me was Acts chapter three, verse 16. And his name by faith in his name has made this man strong whom you see. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. All right. And so um, this is actually speaking of um, how John, um, not John, I'm sorry, um, how Paul had um caused um Peter and John had caused this man sorry I'm just saying all kinds of names Peter and John had caused this man to um walk in healing right he they caused him um by listening to the Holy Spirit they were able to um lay hands on this man they didn't even lay hands on this man they helped him up and and so this man who had been crippled from birth was able to stand up and walk and so it says, um, it was faith, right, that did this thing. And so it says, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom you see and know. And the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all. 
All right. And so the thing that I felt like Holy Spirit was trying to say about this verse is actually speaking about tribulation as well. And the fact that um, we don't know a lot very clearly about um, tribulation and how salvation works in tribulation, because we know that grace will not be the same. But here I feel like Holy Spirit is giving us insight into that process. And the thing that he's letting us know is that it's by faith that people will be saved, right? Uh, We know that they will have to manually cleanse their garments, but here it says, and his name by faith in his name has made this man strong. So in order for us to become these overcomers, we first must have um, faith that rests on grace, right? And so when that grace um, time frame is gone, that grace period is gone, then there's going to have to be something else, right? Because it's no longer that free gift that was offered up for everyone, right? Christ still paid the price for their sins, but now there will be labor required um, for those who um um, who are left behind, who have who have missed that great opportunity, um, and now they have to undergo a testing in order to receive that that um, salvation. And so this refinement um, and testing is is going to reveal the faith, right? It's going to to press into people, and they are going to need to have faith to believe. God, right? It's it's gonna almost be put back into an area of of Abraham, right? Remember, Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him as righteousness. Now Abraham did not have um Holy Spirit dwelling inside of him, but he did believe God and that was what was accounted to him as righteousness. And everyone who comes after him who in the same process believes um they will it will be accounted to them as righteousness, right? Um, and so those who, of course, come after the birth of Christ, those who believe in Christ that he was sent and he is the Son of God, that he has died, he rose again, and now they are saved, right? And so um, I feel like the Holy Spirit is giving us insight into the fact that it is by faith that these people are going to overcome. It says, and his name, by faith in his name, has made this man strong, whom we see and know, and the faith that is through Jesus has given the man this perfect health in the presence of you all all right and so um this uh scripture actually is is a a key in the way that we um look at healing right we we know that healing takes place manifestation of healing um takes place by connecting to faith right because faith is a substance of things hoped for the evidence of things not seen and so in that same way um this is how the cleansing of the garment is going to take place is through that salvation but under testing right all right and so um that testing is going to bring refinement um through fire whereas once the holy spirit will have brought you through that thing the testing will actually bring you through that thing amen all right you guys so james chapter 1 verse 12 blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test he will receive the crown of life which god has promised to those who love him all right and so um This is just speaking of the fact that um, those who have, who are undergoing that, that trial um, that is, is coming upon the whole earth. Those are the ones who are going to um, receive the crown of life, right? When they are in that tribulation period, when they are going through the testing and the trials, um, So the third verse that the Lord gave me was James chapter one, verse 12. 
Blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. All right. And so this actually, just like the others, um, I felt like Holy Spirit was speaking about um, those who are undergoing the, the testing that is coming upon the whole world, right? Those who are left behind, um, those who uh, who are on the earth during that great tribulation. And so it says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. So um, these people who are going to be here are going to be under a test, right? Whether you want to receive Christ or not, everyone is going to be undergoing a test. And so um, those who remain steadfast, um, meaning that um, once you have received um, Christ into your heart, you have believed by faith in, in Christ, then you're going to be still under that testing. You're still going to be under that, that, that trial that is coming upon the whole earth, right? And so it says um, he wants us to remain steadfast fast, right? He wants you to, to stand firm in faith, right? He, he wants all of us to remain steadfast, even now as a believer, as a wise bride, you should remain steadfast. But while you are undergoing the trial as a person who is in the tribulation, those who either were left behind, maybe you were an unwise bride, or you came to know Christ after the tribulation began, um, either way, this is going to be a trial in which you need to remain steadfast. And so God is going to bless you in that um, you are, you have made it through that. You're going to be blessed because of that. Why? Because you're not going to see hell, right? You're going to be cleansed and, and ready to be in the presence of God, right? And so that is going to come through faith, right? That's going to come through faith and and there's actually another key that is going to come through, but we'll talk about that as well. It says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial. Um, for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life. All right. So that means that when he gets to the end of the testing, when he has made it all the way through, he's going to receive the crown of life. He's going to be able to um, participate in, in having eternal life. He's going to receive a crown. Um, and, and that is going to be from the Lord. That is a blessing. That is a blessed state to be in. All right. And so it says, which God has promised to those who love him. And so um, that is a key portion in the previous scripture, right? Because remember, faith worketh by love, right? And so um, if faith works by love, then we need to love God, right? We need to walk in that love. And so um, if a person is left in tribulation, they're going to need love, right? They're going to need to love God. They're going to need to um, stand in faith and, and in the way that that faith is going to work at that point is going to be by the love, right? That they have for God. And so that they're, they're, they're going to have to remain and press into love. Amen. And so um, Christ is love, right? And so um, we need to, to really and truly pray for those who are going to be here. Um, it's going to be a lot of lovelessness in this world um, when the Lord comes and they are going to be under great testing because, you know, as much as they're going to love God, they're going to experience a, a great amount of unlove, right? A great amount of things that, that press against them that are not what they're going to want to um, deal with. They're not going to want to feel. They're not going to want to um, experience, right? If you read the book of Revelation, there are so many things that are going to come on this earth where people are just going to want to die, right? And so when you're trying to operate in love through that, that is a great testing, right? That is a great trial. That is a great 
um, that is going to be a very hard test. And remember, um, Christ went through the hard test, so we don't have to right now. We're under grace, right? But then they won't be, right? And so then when that grace has is been lifted, the test um, will begin and you don't want to be a part of that. You don't want to have to go through those sufferings, right? Th- there is suffering that we go through right now, but it is as affliction, not as silver, right? As the Bible says. So we want to um, be refined in the furnace of affliction and not in the furnace as silver going in um, seven times, which the Lord had showed us that, you know, that is representative of the tribulation. We don't want to have to go through that. And so um, here it says, blessed is the man who remains steadfast under trial for when he has stood the test, he will receive the crown of life, which God has promised to those who love him. So if you love him, stand fast. Amen. Even the now, even in now, stand fast, right? And if you are a part of the believers who come after the tribulation begins, stand fast, stand firm in faith and do it by love. Faith worketh by love, right? So in order to to truly um say that you have a love for the Lord, keep Jesus's commandments. Jesus said to do things, you walk by those ways, right? You don't have Holy Spirit to help you navigate in the same way, right? But at the same time, you do have the words of Christ, right? And so um, if you have the words of Christ, um, then, then you can listen to him you can navigate to the by the words that he spoke and and you can operate in love right because Christ says if you love me then you'll keep my commandments and faith worketh by love and here the lord is saying it the key is faith right so have faith in god believe what he said that his son is the son of god and and love him right? Love, love God and, and operate in a way that is consistent in love. Amen. Even under harsh trial, harsh tribulation and heavy testing. Amen. All right, you guys, let's pray. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Thank you for showing us how to continue to endure even when we don't know how to endure, Lord. I pray that you put a blessing on the people who hear this, who might be in tribulation. Lord God, give them the strength to overcome God and cleanse their garments. They don't have any other choice. God, help them to remain steadfast under trial. Help them to receive that crown of life and and walk in that love, Lord God, that you require. Lord Jesus, help them to have faith, faith in your name. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, you guys, if you would like to um, receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you prayed those that prayer, you believe that prayer, then the Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you into the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth, meaning he is going to do just that. Amen. Also, um, one of the things that um, Christ, uh, well, no, before I say that, if there's anybody out there who would like to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm saying the wrong one. If there's anybody out there who would like to 
receive um would like to rededicate their heart to the lord go ahead and pray this prayer with me um, If there's anybody out there who would like to rededicate their heart to the Lord, um, maybe you have fallen away from Christ. Um, maybe you have just not been listening to Holy Spirit and and not having a relationship with the Lord um, for or falling away for any other reason. Just go ahead and pray this prayer with me. Dear Lord Jesus. I ask you to forgive me for my sins. You see that I'm not on the right path. Right on my heart, God. Help me to have your words written on my heart. Help me to begin to hear your voice, God. Forgive me for all my sins. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. Create in me a clean heart, O oh God, and renew a right spirit within me. Jesus, forgive me for my sins, Lord. Help me to walk back on this narrow path with you, Jesus. Lord God, show me what to do. Lead me back home to you. Help me to walk in the light. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, um, if you've prayed those prayers and you believe those prayers, then Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can can break that seal except Christ Jesus um, when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. Um, and he's going to do just that. Amen. One of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God. And um, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. And then also um, go out and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Amen. Um, one thing I felt like Holy Spirit was telling me as it relates to James 1 12 as well, I forgot to say, was that, you know, um, he wants us to write his, he wants for those who are in tribulation to have his word written on their heart. Right. And because, you know, there is no more Holy Spirit, that's how um, the love portion um, causes the faith to work, right? Because as you love him, you're going to love his words. They're going to be comforting to you. Whereas you don't have the Holy Spirit for comfort, you have the words of Christ for comfort. And so the more you love him and you have a passion for him and that love is manifested in the way that you are going to study his word and the way that you're going to embody his word, you're going to grab hold of his word, be obedient to his word. And in that word is going to begin to be written on your heart because of your love, right? It's going to cause your faith to work. Amen. And so put your trust in him. If you are in tribulation, just keep putting your trust in him. He still sees you. No, the Holy Spirit isn't there anymore. But you know what? He still sees you and he still hears you crying out to him. He can still answer prayers. Even though the Holy Spirit isn't there anymore, he can still answer prayers. So just, just totally put your trust in him. And, and he is going to guide your path, maybe not in the same way that he used to with the Holy Spirit there, but God is still alive. God is still real and, and have hope. Amen. All right, you guys be blessed and take care.